Okay, so now we've got to start to do the uh, pearl on these edge pieces here. But first, I have to fix a problem, which is, uh, I don't know if you can see, but just here, on this kit, there is a 3D printed outer band. And unfortunately, it's starting to show a little sign of uh, a crack in there in the top base coat. So I'm going to fill that area in and hopefully blend it nicely and then repaint these bits. You can see just a little bit of evidence here and a little bit more on this edge here. So we have to mask off everything else that we've done with the pearls. Okay, now we've got a five mil ring around the edge, just protecting the bit. It's not a, an edge to work to with the paint. We're now going to increase that five mil by about an inch with an inch masking tape. Who'd have thought? Now we don't have to be too super crucial with this, so we can afford to crease it a little. So we've got a little bit of masking around the outside just to protect that. Now we're going to mask off the middle bit with a piece of newspaper, fold it into four, put that, put the fold in the middle, no. roughly, doesn't matter and then just uh, tear yourself a circle. Okay, fully protected. All we've got visible now are these little edges where we're gonna do the pearls. But first we're gonna do our fix on uh, a couple of little blemishes that have appeared. And they're so small I can't find them. Where are they? Around here, just in this area here. They're a little blemish. I don't know if you can see that, that tiny hair crack. We're going to sort that out. Okay, so I don't want to be too brutal with this part. Obviously, I want to reveal exactly what's going on underneath the surface of that paint there. So I'm going to start off with a sanding stick just to reveal the edges between the two materials. You'll see that reveal itself in a minute because the 3D printed part is actually dark grey and the surface of the model is actually a white. So we should get a difference in color from the 3D printed part to the uh, model part. And we'll see what's going on. You can see now the edge of the 3D printed part is starting to show itself just here. So we're gonna chase that. We obviously don't wanna sand it right back and make the edge all wibbly and wobbly. What we're trying to do is just reveal the surface of the part underneath the paint. So we're only taking off the paint. And a very gentle action, just following the line of the saucer. You don't want to sand across the crack because you don't want to open it up too much. You definitely don't want to flex anything if it's moving. And if it is moving, we're going to add a tiny bit of super thin CA to capillary action down into that, into that crack and seal it all up properly. Sometimes things like this happen on these models because they're, they're not like your Airfix model kit where everything fits together precisely. There's a ridiculous amount of work to get these pieces to fit this piece properly. It's by no means a plug and play. So we can now see the edge and we can see the area. Very, very slight depression. Doesn't look to be a lot. In fact, this section here doesn't look too bad. Right, feeling now with my nail, just to see if there's any tactile gaps. And it seems like negligible. It may just be a surface crack in the paint from some kind of knock or movement or even temperature variation. So yeah, pretty freaky that. Seems very flat there. We may even be able to get that with just a coat of filler paint. Uh, primer, but we'll see. So, doesn't look too bad. Right round to the next bit, which is just here. I don't know if you can see this on the film, but there's a very slight crack there. I think this one may even be in the paint as well. And due to the shape of this saucer, because it was all over the place when I got it, um, 
some of these surfaces are not quite flat because I had to put a very slight radius and try and tweak the thickness of the thing to try and straighten it up from the outside. It's a bit of a nightmare kit, but uh, shaped itself up well. So doing exactly the same on this bit. Fairly coarse sandpaper, but nothing ridiculous. Because what we just want to do is strip the paint off without removing the edge of the material. Again, now we've sanded it back, it looks to have almost completely disappeared. We'll see. We'll get it back to base and then we'll know. Now I'm not sanding in one little area. So the last thing you want to do is knock down a little section compared to everywhere else. Hence the sanding stick. The sanding stick works quite well because it does have a relatively flat support. So when you put pressure on it, it won't flex into a curve and dig into the surface. As long as you keep it fairly flat and just run it in the area you want to run it in. Okay, so we've got 3D printed part and a resin cast fiberglass part. So, again, running my nail over it. I can't feel any kind of surface indiscretion there or gaps. But you've got to bear in mind the thickness of your nail. It's about half a mil. The gap's considerably thinner than that. So we need something thinner than a nail. So we're going a bit thinner. Thinner than a nail, what do you get? You get a scalpel. This one's a bit used, but it doesn't matter for this. We're only exploring, we're not cutting. If I just slowly take that across the surface, if there's any edge there, it'll find it. And see where it is. It's just here. I'm gonna mark it with the end of this scalpel. Because what I'm about to do is just put a little bit of super glue in that area. Let's move on to the bigger piece. So, what have we got here? Anything? There's definitely something here. So again, I'm just gonna mark that. If it had needed a lot of filler, I would have excavated this area and dug deep so the filler would actually have some substance to it and keep itself in good nick. Uh, I can feel that dropping in there. Okay, so there is definitely one there. Now what I'm trying to do is get a rough curve on that surface. See, this, this blade being curved will only touch on the curve and it will effectively cut a small angled groove into the surface. So you can be quite precise with these when scraping and this is going to take off any loose paint at the edge of what I suspect is a crack because the surfaces are not quite together. You can see now there's another one opening up just here. Okay. So we now want to fill whatever gap there is between these two pieces with some very thin super glue. Okay, you can use whatever brand you need. Thing to remember is don't just put it in the thing and squidge it on, because what'll happen is you'll put a ton of it in there and it'll just go everywhere and that'll be the surface of the model annihilated pretty much, especially with the thin stuff. Treacherous gear to use. If you're using the thin, be prepared. The bottle's pointless. Don't do it from the bottle. You've got to put it into a decanter and drip it in with the edge of a scalpel. So, if you're going to decant super glue, the hell are you going to put it in? Because it's going to be knackered after you've used it. So what I do is I take myself a piece of masking tape, put my finger in the middle, fold it over, make myself a little trough like this, put my finger in the middle of it and stick it onto your worktop. That gives you a little tiny bowl. See that? Now you can put your super glue in there. Doesn't matter if it goes hard because it's a piece of masking tape, you can throw it away. It is wasteful on the super glue, 
you get a much better result. So to feed the super glue in, I've got this little old scalpel. Um, I only use it for glue, hence the state of it. You can see all the glue on the ends, but keep your blade clean. It's easy to clean with something like this. Once you get a little bit of a build up, just clean it off like that. You get yourself a nice blade again. Dip it into the super glue. You'll find that if you hold it horizontal, it'll stay on. If you hold it vertical, it'll gather around the tip. So you can transport the glue to your model without dripping it if you hold it horizontally. Okay, that's quite important. If you hold it like that, as you go to your model, the chances are some of it may drip off. Watch out. Okay, we bring it up to the model with it horizontally. And we're just gonna touch the surface where we think the crack is. You can see it's leaving a little juicy bead on there. Now, if there's any flexation in those surfaces, a little push-pull won't do it any harm. You should hopefully be able to see a little bead of super glue on that surface. Can you see at this end, that highlight with the shine on it just there? There's no gap in the model there sitting perfectly on the surface. If there hadn't been a gap, the rest of that line would have looked the same. But as you can see, some of it has disappeared, which means it's done its job. Okay, so now don't use a kicker. The kicker will expand it. And if it expands inside that gap, you're gonna crack further along. So it will just expand it and push it off further and make more of a crack in this area here. So don't use that. Just let it kick off on its own. Anything extra on the surface will sand back. There's base coats to go on. It's not a problem. And now the super glue has kicked off. It's nice and hard. We can now start to just go over that with a light sanding. Using something, I think this is probably a 400 maybe a bit more. But what we're not trying to do is push hard. The super glue will be slightly harder than the material around each side. So what you don't want to do is push down hard to remove the super glue because that will, the super glue will deform the end of this around the hard bit and you'll end up sanding the piece of material either side of the super glue. If that happens, you're just going to be sanding forever and it's going to make a little bump. No matter what you do, there's going to be a bump where the super glue is. So think of it more of a machining process. You're only taking off the high spots. There's hardly any pressure on this, allowing the sandpaper to just drift over the surface of the super glue, because that's the bit you want to sand. You don't want to sand the model, you want to sand the super glue filler that you just put in. It takes a while, don't rush it. If you feel it beading, the super glue's not kicked off enough. If you feel it smooth, happy days. And you can see now the area where the super glue is living, just offset by about a mil from this edge. That's super glue filler just there, that dark line. So there was a little gap there. Indiscernible to the finger, indiscernible to a scalpel, but definitely showable with super glue. How amazing is that? Always keep your strokes parallel to the area that you want to go in. All right, we're getting there now. So now you've finished with your little uh, pot of glue. There's some in the bottom. Dangerous stuff to have hanging around, eh? Screw it up, put it in the bin. Don't get it on your fingers. Job done. Right, so now we've got this sanded down as best we can. We don't want to take any more off because we don't want to start getting a wibbly-wobbly edge. So what I'm going to do just to resurface it now is put a very thin layer of filler just on the top, just to knock it back again. We'll take nearly all of it off, to be fair, and the rest of it will just sit inside this little gap here. I use this. I'm not sponsored by anybody don't get any discount, don't get anything really. But that is what you get with one of these. This is junk, don't worry about it. Just unscrew it here, use that as a cap. Um, I've got a piece of plastic card that I've cut square on the end. This is gonna be used as a very small spreader.
I'm just working it slowly to the edge by changing the angle slightly on the spatula and that's good to go. A little raised edge on it, doesn't matter, we're sanding it, who cares? Onto the big one, same thing, a little bit of filler on the end of your plastic card, pop it on the surface and just chase your wave along the surface. You're not applying a lot of pressure. All you're trying to do is put a very, very thin surface layer over the top of the work that you've just done. But what you don't want to do is not get it into the gaps. I'll just run my finger on the edge again, just to clean up the face. So that's it now, we wait for that to dry. Then we can attack that, sand it back, put the base coat on, do the details, flip it over and mark the other sides. So we filled those in, now flip it over, get the top masked off. So we can then start to work on the strips on the edge around here. Happy days.